Thank you. My name is Andrei Rybachevsky. I just finished, I think, the most complex part of my presentation, connecting my laptop. Uh, second guy, Mark Drans, he is not here, but uh, all the work that I will present is actually being developed and supported by his group at the Ripen CC. So, uh, Ripen CC information services, and probably many of you have heard of those services, and we hope that some of you are using some of the tools that I'm going to present. And this is just a quick update on those tools and services. Um, and we're also going to introduce some new and uh, uh, probably useful and cool stuff and would like to give you an update on this as well. Uh, so we build our information services on three main pillars. And those are a TTM and test traffic measurement network built of 80 Stratum 1 synchronized nodes that spread around the globe and doing connectivity measurements among themselves. Uh, the second one is routing information service, which you can see is a, a, a distributed looking glass with history. And the third one is DNS Mon, a tool that allows to monitor performance of uh, core DNS servers around the globe. Uh, the peculiarity of the test traffic measurement network is that the whole network is very well synchronized. In fact, every node is a Stratum 1 NTP server because it's connected to a GPS antenna. And that allows us to perform one-way measurements of traffic uh, of packet delay lost and jitter. And all the data that measured among those nodes is collected in central place in, and available uh, through various tools that you can create this database and present uh, this data in, in various forms. I can show some of those. Well, if you look at the map of TTM, uh, you would see that mostly it's uh, Europe-centric, but we're also very interested in actually in increasing the presence of TTM probes in the Americas. Africa and Asia Pacific region. This is uh, what one would expect from a traditional TTM uh, service. It allows you to measure uh, connectivity from your network to other networks like network B and network C, also to some uh, reference points, points with very good connectivity uh, such as uh, uh, big internet exchanges that also host TTM uh, probes. And it allows you to look at this data uh, over time in, uh, in, in form of graphs of connectivity, packet lost, jitter, uh, and distribution of, of jitter, for instance. It also allows you to use trace route with history to track routing changes uh, in, uh, well, across certain links to certain uh, measurement points. We are trying to improve uh, uh, user interface and the way we present this data and mapping uh, TTM data to uh, Google Maps is one way of doing this. And using this interface, you can actually also uh, access uh, uh, graphs on packet loss, delay, and jitter. And though geolocation uh, service can play a joke sometimes, sometimes it gives you some insight into uh, interesting patterns you have with your connectivity. But what, what, I, what I told you so far was about traditional TTM network. Uh, what we are doing right now, we're introducing so-called ad hoc tests and ad hoc experiments, which actually transfers TTM in the general purpose ma measurement platform. It basically allows you to measure something beyond just connectivity, just packet loss. It allows you to measure uh, performance of certain applications. And what the idea is pretty simple. It allows you to define a plugin or a test procedure using user configuration interface, deploy this test procedure in the TTM network, do the measurements, collect them, and present in a way you want it to be. And a practical example, for instance, it allows you to measure a web application, how it's seen from the uh, TTM network. Here is a user interface for those ad hoc tests. Uh, well, this particular one actually measures web application. It's called HTTP plugin. We have a few predefined plugins developed. Uh, and this interface allows you to specify 
for how long you would like to run this experiment, what's the frequency of this experiment, uh, what's the region you want to see uh, measure performance of your application from, and of course the URL of your web server. That's how you can see the results. Well, in this particular, we monitored one of our web servers from three locations uh, in uh, European region. And you can see, well, it's not uniform, really. Uh, it also allows you to monitor connectivity over IPv6, provide that your service is available on IPv6. And just before the RIPE meeting uh, in May, last RIPE meeting, we uh, measured performance of our web server, RIPE.net, uh, for quite some time, uh, looking at how our web service uh, looks from IPv6 world as compared to IPv4. Uh, well, you can see some difference. And though the legend is not very really readable, I guess you understand that RAT stands for IPv6. The next platform is Routing Information Service or RIS. As I said, one can look at this as a looking glass with history. Uh, we collect BGP updates from uh, about 600 peers from 15 locations around the globe. And we keep them in our database. And database is searchable over three months, and we also keep raw data forever. And uh, we uh, build uh, quite a few tools that allow to create this database and present RIS data. Well, this is a geo map with uh, locations of RIS route collectors. They're mostly connected to big internet exchanges where we can get uh, many peerings, uh, well, 15 as I said. One of the tools we built using RIS data is a uh, so-called MySense service. It actually allows you to monitor different things happening uh, uh, in routing with regards to your IS. I think some of those things are similar to presented to the Cyclops that we just heard the presentation of. So let's log in. Well, uh, sorry, uh, another slide. Well, again, the idea is simple. Uh, MySN allows you to specify certain conditions, uh, filters, and RIS data will be filtered. Those filters are looking for conditions. If conditions are matched, you uh, as a MySN user will be notified. So let's log in and uh, uh, look at my SN alarms. Well, this alarm is actually called an origin alarm. What it does, it allows you to specify prefix and be alerted if this prefix is originated by someone else at home the system. Those are some parameters of, of, of this alarm where you can specify uh, for how long events should take place before you're notified, how many events should take place before you're notified, and some other parameters. Well, there are other different types of alarms apart from origin, and in fact, you can even specify a regular expression that uh, uh, MySN will match and trigger alarms. Well, here you can assess the triggered alarms, triggered conditions using our web interface, or you can be notified by email and get an email if something happens. We're also trying to collect, collate different data we collect from RIS in one uh, single uh, user interface we call the uh, IS dashboard. Well, here you can see various data presented related to your IS, such as number of prefixes announced, distribution of prefix sizes, distribution of your IS path to different route collectors, or distribution of transit providers for your IS. Also here on this dashboard, you can see uh, BGP activity. We do similar things for prefix and prefix dashboard, we call it, where you can also see uh, um, some events related to, your, uh, to the announcement of your prefix and also stability and visibility of, of, of your prefix as it's seen by route collectors. Also, you can see this on the geo map uh, for a particular, particular route collector. Well, there are many more tools, and uh, I will take just a few minutes just to walk you through some of them. All of them are accessible from this web page. Uh, prefix in use, it allows you to see uh, how, when, last time, this prefix announced and who announced this prefix. 
IS in use allows you to see when the last time IS was seen on the internet and uh, the IS part, the pre peers that uh, were announcing this IS to route collectors. Reese who is, and this it has a standard uh, command line who is interface. It's useful for scripts that can use this service. It actually presents information about uh, a particular prefix in a pseudo RPSL form that is recognizable by some uh, route configuration tools. And nice tool that uh, visualizes uh, BGP activity called BG Play, uh, which is developed by uh, Roma Trey University and is hosted on our website, also using RIS data. And of course, we produce several reports that are similar to those uh, produced by other projects like RouteViews and uh, uh, they're available from uh, our si uh, st site uh, at Statistics. Uh, based on RIS data, we also provide service to several route, uh, regional internet registries such as APNIC, uh, LACNIC, and AFRINIC, uh, where IANA allocates a new slash 8, we deborganize this slash 8, meaning we announce a few prefixes and let ISPs to check if those prefixes are reachable we also look at the risk data and see if they're reachable indeed. And this is a graph uh, showing visibility of a prefix over time, and you can see that, well, soon after the prefix, uh, prefix uh, is announced, uh, already 75% of ISPs uh, see this prefix. I guess that says something about lack of filtering. DNSMON, that's uh, the third service I wanted to uh, um, give you an update. It actually serves that monitors more than 200 core DNS servers that provide the service for uh, root, top level domains, and enum. Uh, it's based on TTM network, so TTM runs the probes that uh, do querying of those services, uh, and we uh, collect this data and present in this tag plot that actually allows you clearly see uh, whether the problem is local to your service or it's local to a TTM probe. For instance, if you see a horizontal red line, it's probably a problem with a probe because the y-axis is its number of probes, num or a probe number. But if you see a horizontal vertical line, that may be uh, um, the, the problem that like very close to your DNS server. So this service is, is used and appreciated by D, D, DNS uh, server operators. But you can also look at DNS mon uh, from a different perspective. Being a TTM box owner, you can actually measure connectivity from your box to those 200 plus uh, core DNS servers, which actually will represent your connectivity to the rest of the internet. And again, you can look at this from uh, in the form of stack plot and uh, see uh, the proximity of uh, problems as related to your uh, TTM probe. Well, and as a conclusion, I would like to give you some URLs and some pointers uh, and some credits, of course. As I said, uh, those tools are being maintained and being developed by uh, the team, which is which call Information Services Department at the RIPE NCC. Uh, if you would like to learn more about routing information service, TTM or DNSMON, those are the URLs. And based on data collected by those tools, we also at the RIPE NCC did some interesting analysis of recent events in the internet, such as cable cut and uh, YouTube hijacking. Uh, we have a science group at the RIPE NCC that do, does analysis of this data, and those reports are also available uh, from RIPE NCC website. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Any questions?